Good evening, scouts and scouters. Welcome to another Dutch oven cooking demo. I hope you all enjoyed our cooking demo early in the week. My name's Joshua. And my name's Tristan. And today we have a really exciting guest. We have Ranger Roy Nadelski here, and he's going to share with us some Dutch oven cooking recipes. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying themselves today. Before we get started cooking, though, I'd like to go over on how to start yourself or prepare yourself for cooking it. One of the things that you have to do when you are out camping is that you have to find some way of getting heat. Today we are using charcoal. There's two ways of using charcoal with a Dutch oven. We either use our chimney stove, which is my preferred method, or you can actually get away with the traditional charcoal lighter that you can find at most stores. Um, you just light your charcoal up and then you can spread it out. One way or the other, our biggest concern with uh, starting charcoal when you are out camping is starting it with uh, lighter fluid. Since we're not allowed to have liquid fuels out on campsites, my recommendation is that you start your fire, start every charcoal with ma a match light charcoal. After you get it going, then you can pour in the rest of your charcoal in on top of it. Once you pour the rest of your charcoal in on top of it, take your pot of water that's for your wash and go ahead and set it in on top of your chimney stove and then walk away from it and allow your, your uh, wash water to get a chance to get started while you are prepping the rest of your meal. Let's go cook. All right, we're ready to get started cooking. Probably the most important thing about cooking, other than making sure you have the ingredients before you get out there, is to make sure that you have the recipe with you. My recommendation is that you bring a copy of the recipe with you at all times. This way, when you are out camping, because we all know scouting campouts have the best climated weather, no rain, no, no nothing. Um, but then this way you have a copy of the recipe, you're not ruining a cookbook or your only copy of the recipe. Uh, this evening we're cooking chicken and stuff, which happens to be my wife's favorite recipe. Let's get started. Um, start off by sanitizing your hands, washing and sanitizing. Then my, uh, because of uh, it's chicken and we don't like to have uh, old chicken juice all over the thing, I recommend wearing some kind of gloves or some way of keeping yourself from cross-contaminating it. But all you have to do is set your chicken. I prefer chicken thighs, you can use chicken breasts. Um, set them in the bottom of the Dutch oven. Nice and flat. Take off our glove because we don't want to get chicken on the rest of our stuff. Next, take your cream of chicken soup. I personally prefer the flip tops because, uh, well, nobody likes to use a can opener when they're camping. Take and pour your chicken, your cream of chicken on top. Got a spatula here that we can spread our chicken out, or our, our cream of chicken just out a little bit on top of our chicken. Need a quarter cup of grape juice. After you've been cooking for a while, you kind of cheat. Um, I recommend pouring your quarter cup of uh, grape juice, a little bit more won't hurt, inside your uh, cream of chicken can. Swish it around a little bit, get the rest of your cream of chicken out of there. Pour it in on top of your chicken. Take your cheese. This is mozzarella cheese, by the way. Lay it in on top of the chicken. Your stuffing, two cups or one box of stove top. I'm a stove top man, personally. Like my stove top. Spread it out on top of your uh, chicken, like such. Take your pads of butter. I recommend, it says to belt the butter, I personally recommend cutting butter, butter pads. Just cut your butter pads. To make sure you take the little papers off, because otherwise that makes for exciting eating later. And then just take and lay, lay your butter pads over the top. Once your butter pads are around it across the top, so that they can melt and help cook your stove top, put your lid on it and we are ready to go back over to the chimney stoves, use the charcoals that we started earlier, and start cooking dinner. Sweet. All right, let's go. 
Probably the best thing the Boy Scouts of America ever came up with was a pair of hot pot tongs. I recommend if you're doing Dutch oven cooking, this is a great place to start. It's a real cheap way of being able to carry your Dutch ovens and use your Dutch ovens. Now that we're back over here with our chimney stoves, your water should be pretty warm. Make sure it's, everything in the kitchen is, not, is supposedly hot, so just make sure it's not hot before you go picking it up. And it is hot, so we are not going to go picking it up. So we'll go from there. Anyway, now your water is prepped for your wash, rinse, and sanitize for your uh, cleaning up afterwards. With your chimney stoves, you just want to take a handful of charcoals. If you read the, the uh, if you read a camp cookbook, they'll tell you you know like ten charcoals equals X amount of degrees. I have found that charcoal is a this is an art form more than it is a science. So you need to practice a little bit in order to figure out what you need. We're going to start today with about probably 15 coals on the bottom and about 25 on top, and then we're going to cook through it. So we just take our, our Dutch oven, take a handful of charcoals, set them out here on the ground, our 15. We've got our 15 charcoals on the bottom, lift our Dutch oven up on top of our charcoals and then put about 25 of them on top. It is probably important to understand to not, not bake, is that, that's essentially what we're doing, bake on top of the chimney stoves. If you've got a fry hamburger or something, you can do that on top of the chimney stoves, but in general, you do not want to bake on top of the chimney stoves. Now at this point, we just gotta sit and wait. It's a good time to get cleaned up with the rest of the dishes that you guys have already used to cook with. You can get those started, get those cleaned up before you guys even sit down for your meal. Probably got about a 20, 25 minute wait, and then we're ready to go. Now, just like any good cooking show, we have our second Dutch oven over here already full of, uh, already full of dinner. When it's time to check this, remember, the more you check it, the more you lose. So, you want to check this as infrequently as possible, but when you open it up, go ahead and open it up. And probably the most reliable way to check to see if your meat's ready is to use a meat thermometer. I personally, you just take the meat thermometer out, you just set it inside the end, of, set it in. If you've got bone in your food, you put it next to the bone, and you just read the temperature on it. This is poultry, chicken, so it's a, it needs to be at about 165 degrees. And right now we are looking at 100 and 171, 173, oh, 168. All right, I don't know about you, but it sounds like it's time to eat. So a lot of you might ask where our Major Roy gets a lot of his recipes from. Just to give you an idea, in cooking this meal today, I found a really cool one on the back of the stove top box that I plan on trying the next time I'm out. Other favorite books that I enjoy um, getting my recipes out, the Scout's Own Cookbook, which you can get actually from the Scout Shop, the Betty Crocker Cookbook, this is my grandmother's cookbook, we go into the casserole section, and anything you can cook in the casserole section, you can cook in a Dutch oven. This is actually the Camp Dutch Oven Cookbook that comes with the Lodge Dutch Ovens. It's actually got a handful of nice, good starter recipes in it that make it uh, a lot of fun for you guys to use. Um, the Pioneer Camp Cooking Book, um, this is one that I found on one of my vacation trips. It's got a really good jambalaya recipe in it. And a Southwest Dutch oven, just because I wanted something a little more spicy and a little more tangy. Um, I've tried a couple of Cornish game hens out of this one, which turned out really well. Um, but this is where they are. Joshua, you enjoy today's recipe so much. By the way, it's on page 95 of that book right there. Um, Sounds good. All right, Roy, thanks for uh, coming by and schooling us and uh, how to properly Dutch oven cook.
All right, guys, so we'd love to see what you guys make at home now that we've learned some new techniques. So go ahead, uh, post them on social media, and make sure you guys tag us at Simon Kent Council so that way we can see them. Uh, so that's all we have for now, so uh, let's go eat.